I've been strictly doing creative finance for two years and okay. I haven't even been distracted with cash deals. I only go after specific homeowners that have a specific problem because creative finance, it's not really going to work for every every single person. Let's just say if a homeowner bought it with no money down and, and they barely own the house and the market price went, went dropped, they have no equity. So those are the homes that I specifically go after because I know that if they were to sell that house on the market traditionally today, they might break even or lose it. Because I usually say like, you don't get rich off your first deal. Right. You get rich because you did your first deal. If you never would have got that first one, all this other crap probably wouldn't have happened. No. All right, guys, on the podcast today, we're going to do something very special. We are going to expose Pace Morby, and we're going to teach you about creative finance, and we're going to teach you about a strategy that is working right now to help you get your first deal. And we have someone very special, Kevin Cho. How's it going, baby? How's it going? Thank you so much for having me here. Excited to have you on because I heard you are crushing it in creative finance. <laughs> heard you did like 70 something deals this year. Yeah. Doing a bunch of midterm rentals. What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So uh, my name is Kevin Cho. And yeah. um, this year has been really crazy because uh, I've been in real estate for the last three years. And I, I would definitely say like this year has been one of the most successful years I've ever had. There you go. Um, Partially because, you know, I, I, I specialize in creative finance. So mm. like, I don't do any of the, I, I've never flipped a house before. I've, really? ne I've never even, yeah, I've never even, I don't even know how to t change a doorknob. Like it's like, I am like I very, yeah, I'm not a very <laughs> handy person. Um, I've done like a lot of cash, do a lot of cash wholesale deals where, you know, I buy deal, I find the deal for a flipper and I'll yeah. make a, you know, $10,000 assignment fee. Uh, but for the last two years of me being in real estate, I, I really niched down on creative finance where Either you take over somebody else's mortgage payment, yeah, or you know, I, I go work directly with the homeowner and say, "Hey, would you give me this financing, which would be called seller finance?" Yeah, and this year has has really skyrocketed. You know, okay. I'm, I've done seventy three subject two transactions this Damn. year alone. That's a lot in the last eleven months. And then you got a bunch of midterm rentals too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How so many do you have right now? I have ten. Ten midterm rentals. Ten midterm rentals. How much cash flow does that bring in? Uh, each of them. Uh, it it really depends on the house, but I, I'll say average like eighteen hundred dollars per house. Damn net, or is that yeah, gross? that's net. Like that's after mortgage payment, private money payment, you know, vacancies Damn. and all that stuff. And then you told me about you did a really big deal that you like bought a house sub to, and you make like twelve thousand dollars a month. Yeah. So cash flow. Yeah. So about four months ago, I bought my I bought my primary residence uh -huh. sub two. So I took over somebody else's mortgage payment at three point three percent. This was only four months ago when the rates were at almost seven point eight. Yeah. Eight percent. So I took over somebody else's mortgage payment at three point three two five. Uh huh. And I actually lived. I actually moved into it for like the last four months. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, like. I'm. I don't. I'm a single guy with no kids, and like I don't have, yeah. you know, a wife or anything like that. So for me, I was like, you know what? Let's just put this up on Airbnb. Yeah. So we put an outrageous amount, like four hundred fifty dollars a night. Yeah. Uh, and within like two days, we we had a construction company that came by, and they're like, hey, like we want to we want to book your book your property for the next fifty eight days, and they didn't even negotiate on my price. Yeah. Like they literally just booked it right there and there. So I guess on Airbnb, there's option you can like request to book it, or you can just book it right away. Mm -hmm. They booked it right away. Uh. <laughs> Twenty six thousand dollars for fifty eight day booking. Damn, yeah, that's a lot. That's a, that's yeah. a lot of money. <laughs> so okay, so let's rewind. So you're crushing it right now. Yeah. Okay. So how did you start? And you're young, right? How old are you? Twenty six. I'm twenty three. Twenty three. Damn, yeah. you're super young. Okay, yeah. so you started when you were twenty. Yeah, I started when I was twenty, almost a little after I, straight out of high school. Okay, so you graduated high school, and then what made you want to get into real estate? Well, for, so I, after graduating from high school in 2019, I ended up going to a community college for a little bit. Oh, okay. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I, I just don't see myself doing this for like for the next four, five, six years. Was that here or where was that? That, at? Was, that was back in California. In Irvine. Got yeah, it. Yeah, that was back okay. in Irvine. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I just can't. Like, I, 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 like it's like week two of going to co community college. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't do this. for. There's no way I'm doing this. Yeah. So I, I was, I was kind of thinking to myself, what, what other alternatives can I do if I were, if I didn't do if I didn't go to community college mm -hmm. without a degree. And the only thing I really knew at that time was, okay, let's get into real estate because uh, number one, I came from a pedigree of real estate. So like my dad was, dad was a flipper. Oh. My uncle was a flipper. But this is, but this is back in Cal This is back in Korea. Oh, yeah. it's a flip houses in Korea. Yeah, my dad flips apartment buildings. Damn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. In Korea still? Yeah, in Korea still. He still okay. couldn't say he flips uh, like multifamily stuff. Oh, okay. And, you know, but I didn't grow up with him, so I didn't. I, I would say I didn't have. It didn't have a direct impact on me. Uh -huh. But that was the only thing I knew. And one of my biggest inspiration at that time was Graham Stephan, mm. because I watched his videos when he yeah. was, 
um, when he was straight out of college or straight yeah. out of high school and he got into real estate as an agent. Yeah. And he, his, his story really aligned with me. So I, that's kind of how I got myself into real estate. Mm -hmm. And with what, and then I ended up uh, getting my real estate agent's license. Oh, so you started off as a realtor. Actually, as soon as I passed the uh, a real estate agent's license test, I never, I like, I fell into wholesaling and I never even, mm. I never even hung my li license with anyone. Got with it. The broker. So, okay. So you're like, okay, I want to be a realtor. You get your license. How did you find out about wholesaling? Uh, well, so it's so funny because everything that I, that I learned at that time was from YouTube because I didn't have a lot of money to like go invest, go invest into other mentorships. So what I did was I would go and watch a lot of Graham Stephan's video and then one of Max Maxwell's video came out. Oh, I think a lot of so many people get it. So many, yeah, yeah, the OG. So many yeah. people watch his videos, and they still, you know, they still to this day, you know, are they got into real estate because of him? Mm -hmm. And he was like, "You can make ten thousand dollars within the next thirty days doing wholesaling." You're like, "Okay, yeah, sign <laughs> me up, sign me up." <laughs> so, I, I literally did as soon as I, that was like a week after I got my real estate license, real uh -huh. estate agent license, and I didn't even touch it, and I got re re right into wholesaling. Got it. Okay, so you. You decided to get into wholesaling. Yeah. So what is that? What did that look like? Uh, so I tr I tried doing it without without a coach for okay. for a long time. Yeah. For like about four or five months, and I'm like, I can't. There's no way I'm gonna get a deal. So so what did you actually do? I want people to hear like, what did you actually do when you when you're like, okay, I want to wholesale. Yeah. Did you go put bandit signs? Did you start cold calling? Did you send out mail? Like what? So what I what I ended up doing was I ended up getting a coach, and my uh -huh. coach said you need to go get this software, and you need to send out start you need to start message uh, start sending out uh, SMS. Okay, so you started texting. Yeah, and yeah. And, I, and at that point I didn't really have a lot of money. I had maybe twenty five hundred dollars that I had it like to my entire name, and I just spent that entire twenty five hundred bucks on that marketing, and I didn't get a single deal out of it. Damn. For the five for the first five and a half to six months. And then I'm like, at that point, I was like so close to giving up on real estate. Uh, so I'm like, okay, well, let's do let's do a last ditch try. So I went on. This is totally off the blue. What I did was I ended up going on Facebook Marketplace uh -huh. and started text, started like mess messaging all the homeowners I had that had a distressed house on on, on Facebook Marketplace. Mm. And people then, list their house on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This was back three years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. And within two days, I get a homeowner. that's like, yeah, I'm I'm trying to sell my house. I don't I, I didn't put it up on the ML, MLS because I didn't want any of my families to see what I'm going through. Mm. So I just have it on Facebook Marketplace, and it's a for sale by owner. It needs a lot of work. And within two days of me being on Facebook Marketplace, I ended up getting a deal out of it. Okay, so hold on, walk me through this deal. This guy listed his house on Facebook because yeah. he didn't want his family to know. Yeah. Was it listed at a wholesale price, or like walk me through the details? It was. It was actually listed as just slightly below what the house house could have been at, at the wholesale price. So okay. I, I think that from what I from what I remember from what I remember, the house was worth like two forty, and he had the house up for like one seventy. Oh wow! Like it was already at a deep discount. Okay. Or good enough discount. I just had to price drop him like twenty grand, and I ended up getting and then I went for one fifty for one fifty. Okay, so you gave him an offer for one fifty. Yeah. You got it under contract. Yeah. How did you find a buyer? So I actually, I actually, uh, there was a company called Keekly. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. And, and they and they specialize in finding buyers for all these wholesale deals. So I ended up partnering up with them. They took 50, they got fifty percent of the deal, and I got fifty percent, and I mm. ended up making five grand. And it's so funny because I spent the last five and a half to almost six months just on like sp spending money on marketing. Yeah, and then not getting anything out of it. Mm -hmm. And then I go on Facebook Marketplace for two days, and then I'm like, I get a deal that yeah in two, in two days. And then if you think about it, you worked for five months to make like a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. But that deal pretty much made you rich. Cause I usually say, like, you don't you don't get rich off your first deal. Right. You get rich because you did your first deal. Yeah. Because if you never would have got that first one, all this other crap probably wouldn't have happened. No, never. Yeah. So okay, so you get that five K, you're probably like, damn. I'm I'm rich now. Yeah, like I'm balling. What do I, yeah? Like, what did you do after that? I literally spent the whole almost next six months doing exactly what I did on Facebook Marketplace, and I ended. I averaged like two deals a month just off of Facebook Marketplace. What? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. Nobody like no, nobody really knows this story. I'm about to go on <laughs> Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> it's my new marketing. It, it, it's so funny because like nobody was taught to go on Facebook Marketplace. So every every person every homeowner that I would call. Like it's like they they have never been approached by another investor. Mm, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. So so you start crushing Facebook. 
Facebook Marketplace for free. And then I added Craigslist on top of it. And I think I got like two deals out of Craigslist. What? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Completely free. Not a single dollar. So how much money were you making wholesaling houses on Facebook Marketplace? I was probably making like eight to 10 grand a month. Yeah. With no marketing. With no marketing. I li- but it was literally just me. No, I didn't have any VAs. Yeah. I just started. I just looked at all the houses that looked a little, little bit distressed, and I'll just call them up. All that's all I did. Damn. Yeah. Did it ever get any? Did you ever get any like sketchy sellers on Facebook? Uh. I had I had this one I had this one per uh, one homeowner or one homeowner who they didn't even they didn't even own the house, mm-hmm. but it was like they've been they've been squatting for the last like you know I think like three or four years, so they yeah. thought they owned the house. Yeah. So they, they put the house up on the market and I went under contract and then like it comes to find out like who, who, the homeowner that put the house up on the market on Facebook Marketplace, it was never even the homeowner. It was a squatter. It was a squatter. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, you get you get those, but like nothing, like nothing crazy. Nothing crazy? Yeah. So it's just regular homeowners. Yeah. And then you were selling all of them on Keegly to Keegly? Yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you start scaling. It sounds like you're making eight to $10,000 a month. Yeah. Wholesaling from Facebook. Mm-hmm. And then what happened? And then I'm like, it, it started getting com- it started getting a little bit more competitive because people are, people are starting to see like okay Kevin's doing deals without even spending any money uh, and then I'll, and then I'll teach people how to do do uh, on Facebook you marketplace messed up. you messed yeah. up <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like dude why are why are out of nowhere why did why why where's all this competition coming from yeah um so I'm like okay well I got to now pivot because obviously like as a one man show like yeah. I, I don't want to start competing with everybody else so that's that's when I got into uh, sub two with Pace Morby yeah. And then I'm like, you know, and he, and he and his his one of his method is mm-hmm. go work with uh, other wholesalers that don't know what to do with like you know homes that have no equity or homes homeowners that want too much money in their pocket. Yeah. And then I and then I started and then that's when I started to shift my business model where instead of me doing the cash deal, you know, fix and flippers, yeah, I'll only work with cr- uh, creative deals where mm. you take over mortgage payments and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So, okay. So I want to talk about creative finance, but. I think people need to hear that there's there's going to be times in your career where you're going to find something that works. Yeah. And when you find it, you have to freaking push the pedal to the metal. Yeah. So I remember, so I used to be an agent here in Las Vegas. I used to call expired. Yeah. Right. And I, I used to make money as a listing agent. I moved to California and I'm like, okay, I'm going to call expired. But at the time, California was way more competitive and there was less expired. Okay. So that strategy didn't work. Right. So I was like, damn, like, you know, I was a father, I was a husband. I was like, shoot, I gotta like, I gotta actually make money. So <laughs> I gotta figure this out. So then I, I heard about NODs and um, I was like, okay, well, I'll just call these NODs or whatever. I started calling these NODs and everyone that I spoke to, it was I was the first person they spoke to. Really, and I was like, "What the hell?" Like, I went from calling <laughs> expireds that ca- got, got called fifty times a day, yeah, to calling these people, and they're like, "Who is this? What is this about?" And I was like, "Okay, this is really good." So then I start averaging like a contract every forty eight hours. Wow! I was, yeah, I started crushing it, and I was like, "Damn, this is awesome!" But what happened was I was kind of complacent because I was like, "Oh, this is easy. Like, I'll just keep doing this and." You know, this this might be my career, yeah, right? Right. And then six months, eight months later, it's just like you start calling them and they're like, you're the 15th person to call me today. Really? Like, so yeah. And then same story with ringless voicemail. When yeah. ringless vo- voicemail first came out, we were hammering ringless voicemail. Um, I shouldn't even say how many we, we were sending out, but <laughs> we were crushing it. And then regulations changed it um so if anyone's ever listening to this and if you find something that works yeah you need to freaking triple down on it because 100%. it won't work forever yeah yeah and, and that facebook marketplace thing i i i if i if i didn't talk about it and I, if i didn't show people how i how how to do how to do these deals mm-hmm. i feel like that that had that would have that would have had a lot that would have had a longer like lifespan yeah yeah, but you start talking about it, and then people are like, "What is it? How's yeah. it going?" And then all of a sudden, it gets saturated. Yeah, 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 and it gets saturated. It got saturated in such a quick, in no time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so hundred percent agree. So like, but then on top of like, st- you know, once you once you find out what works and put in like, you know, full force, full gas on it, and if it doesn't work, you like your yep. ability to switch it 
mm -hmm. switch to a different uh, method right away. Yep. It's um, important. Yeah, it's very important. Super important. So, okay, so you, you were crushing it uh, doing Facebook, and then you learn about creative finance, you join Sub2, yeah. and then how did you pivot your business? So I, I, I started to realize, okay, there's there's like, if there's like 10 investors, I'll say maybe nine of them are focusing on cash cash deals. Yeah, flippers but, and yeah, selling. Yeah, fl yeah, fix and flippers. But then there's a very small percentage uh -huh. of... Uh, other investors that focus on the creative finance side. Okay, so yeah. which is which is reason why, like, okay, if there's ten investors and I'm and one, only one of them knows how to do, you know, how to take over other people's mortgage payments, mm -hmm. like I could literally crush it with like all these competition. Like they would come to me for help. Yeah. So I I pivoted my business from cash to creative, mm -hmm. and um, I and I, all I did was I I would go to other other wholesalers and say, hey, you know, I I I know how to do creative deals. So any any deals that the homeowner wants too much money on. Just send it to me and I'll, and I'll help you close them. Oh, okay. And that was my entire business model, and that and even that didn't even take any of my own any of my own marketing budget. What year was this? This was two years ago. Twenty twenty one. Yeah, twenty twenty one. Okay, so the market was booming right there. Oh yeah, it, it was it was really competitive. Okay. Yeah. So okay, so you go to these wholesalers, you're like, hey, I could do creative deals, and yeah. then what happens? Uh, people will start so people will start submitting deals. They say, hey, this this homeowner, um, they have. Looks 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 like they just bought the house and they owe too much on the house, and I don't know what to do with it. I can't give them a low cash offer because they have to come out of pocket just to sell these houses. Mm -hmm. So can you help them out? And um and and that was my entire business model. So just in just in Arizona, I would have other wholesalers that come to me sending you deals, sending you sending me deals. And one of the deals I actually uh that 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 literally kind of ten x my business was a deal where it was in, it was in Yuma, Arizona. It was a for sale by owner, mm -hmm. and this wholesaler was calling for sale by owners because she didn't have a lot of marketing budget to sp spend money on. So what she does was she, she calls for sale by owners, and and the homeowner goes, "Yeah, I just bought this house like three months ago." Oh shit! And, and we're like, "Okay, well, how much do you guys want for it?" He goes, "We have to get uh, three fifty for this house mm. because they owe." And then we come to find out the homeowner owed like three hundred and thirty eight on their mortgage. Okay. So if they pay when they pay the buyer's agent and the, you know yeah they have no equity they, they have no equity yeah. So and they've been on the market for almost two months, and they they you know they were going through a divorce. They and the funny thing is they bought the house with their VA loan, so they put no money down. Mm, and so they, and then they had the the VA funding fee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So literally, like if they got a full price offer with and without any mm -hmm. you know buyer buyer's request to fix anything, mm -hmm. they would break even at the best. And they've been on the market for you know a couple months. So I so I come in and I say, all right, um, John and Mary, how about I give instead of you cutting a check. Potentially have to kind of check. I'll give you, you know, five thousand dollars each in your pocket, mm. and I'll come in and take over your mortgage payment. Got it. And that was like one of my very first sub two deals I've ever done. Okay, so let's go through it. So you you approach them. You're like, hey, I'll give you guys ten k to take over the mortgage. Yeah. And then what happens? And then and then I, and then I take over the mortgage payment. I get I give the get, give the ex wife five grand. Mm -hmm. Give the ex husband five grand, mm -hmm. and they all, and they all move into different parts of the country. Okay, and then I I bought the I still have that house still to this day still to oh, this day. Oh, okay. Is that the mortgage payment I took over was, was fourteen hundred, mm. and I have, uh, I have that rented out for like nineteen fifty. Oh, okay. So you kept that one as a rental. Yeah, I kept that one as a long term rental. Got it. Okay, yeah. and then and then I guess like how do people make money, like big paychecks doing creative finance because i know like you could do the rentals yeah but um and then i know you could do like midterm rentals and all that stuff right but, and we talked about airbnb uh -huh. so i know a lot of people do creative finance and then do airbnbs and stuff like that but i feel like airbnb is like going through a tough time right yeah. now and i don't know i feel like a lot of people hype up stuff but they don't share like the true nets when they're doing these deals so like how do people make a living Doing creative finance, so it, it's hard to make. Like, let's just say, like the the Yuma house, for example, mm -hmm. the one that we just talked about. You know, like the five hundred dollars, you know, in gross cash flow. It, yeah, it probably you probably net we probably net like three hundred twenty five dollars. Yeah, and it's and that three hundred twenty five dollars is so small amount that it's not going to change your life. Yeah, it makes nothing. It yeah. makes nothing. I'd rather one go thing make breaks and then you're like yeah. one month it's vacant and then you're like okay that was six months of yeah cash flow gone. Yeah, so, and then and it's something you know. You know, there was a leak in the house, and you know now yeah. you got to fix it. That's like another, that's like a whole year's worth of you know, cash, cash flow. flow. Yeah. 
So for me, like I'm not a big fan of holding properties that and only to cash flow like three hundred and twenty five dollars. So yeah. the, the way to make big checks is you assign those deals deals to somebody else. Oh, okay. So you get it under do you get it under contract or you actually buy it sub to and then assign it? Or you just like get it under contract into a purchase agreement and then assign it yeah, before closing. Yeah. So what 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 I do is you, I, we, I get under contract with the homeowner mm-hmm. and then I'm like, okay, let me take this contract and let me go find somebody that's going to actually buy it. Uh-huh. So, you know, pay spot, you know, probably 25 deals for me where I'll, I'll go directly to the homeowner and say, hey, can I take over a mortgage payment? The homeowner goes, yes, that's perfectly fine. And I'll take that contract and I'll say, hey, Pace, um, the homeowner's getting $10,000 to, t- and you can take over this 3% mortgage payment. Would you pay the homeowner ten thousand dollars, and would you pay me ten thousand dollars for bringing this deal to you? Mm. And then that's how I make my ten thousand dollars. Oh, fee. okay. So yeah. yeah, I want to freaking expose Pace. <laughs> so you sold Pace twenty five homes. Yeah, this uh, year. This year. Yeah. Jeez. So I guess how does that work? I mean, so you're saying Pace will pay you yeah. a wholesale fee, and right. then he will pay the homeowner whatever. I don't know. What do you guys call that? Uh, cash to seller. Cash to seller. Yeah. Okay. And then he just takes over the property. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So there's one one of one of the one of twenty five houses that, that that I sold him. There's a house on forty one hundred one West Flower Street. Mm-hmm. I took over a same situation. The homeowner bought the house with the VA loan. Mm-hmm. They have no equity in the deal. The interest rate is two point seven percent, and the the int- and the monthly payment on the house is eleven eleven hundred dollars and eighty eleven eighty mm-hmm. almost twelve hundred dollars. I. So and so I I go up to Pace, I give the homeowner like seven thousand dollars. Okay. And I go up to Pace and say, Hey Pace, the homeowner is getting seven thousand dollars. Can you pay me fifteen thousand dollars assignment fee? And mm. you can take over this mortgage payment at twelve hundred dollars. Mm. So he paid the home the homeowner cash to seller and he paid my fifteen thousand dollars assignment fee. And now he has that house rented like per bedroom. Uh, and then he's like bringing like thirty five hundred dollars every single month. Damn. So now he has a mortgage payment at twelve hundred dollars mm-hmm. and then he's he and then he's bringing in thirty five hundred bucks. Why didn't you just keep it? It's it's a little tough because at that point, you know, there, there's so much more money into there's so much more to that goes into buying a house, right? You got, I didn't have the ten thousand dollars at that time, and then the, I, the renovation, I, yeah, the renovation the, was going to be at least holding fifteen costs, twenty thousand holding costs. Yeah, it's like no, I rather I'd rather take the fifteen grand yeah. and run. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes sense. So, so I guess like so you just that's your strategy. You just get properties sub two. And then wholesale them out, and then some of them you decide to keep as yeah. a midterm rental. Midterm rental. Okay, so let's break down creative finance for someone who's like brand new. Right. So when you talk to a homeowner, mm-hmm. how do you pitch them on taking a sub two deal? Because I think you're good at sales. That's oh, really? yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I mean, I've been doing deals. creative finance for like I've been, I've been strictly doing creative finance for two years, and like, okay. I haven't even been distracted with cash deals. Um, <laughs> So your question is like, how do you pitch it? Yeah, how do you pitch them? Can we role play if I'm the homeowner? I'm like, what's yeah. up, Kevin? Yeah. Well, before before we before we role play, I only go after specific homeowners that have a specific problem because creative finance it's not really going to work for every every single person, right? Mm-hmm. So I call I call this a no equity list, and this and this mm-hmm. is a list that allowed me to do seventy plus deals. Is I go I go after homes that was just recently bought in the last you know twenty four to thirty six months mm-hmm. where there's low interest rate on it. And they and they paid down maybe like and they only made like you know twenty four mortgage payments you know so you know let's just say if a homeowner bought it with lo- no money down and and they barely own the house and the in the market went and the market price went went drop they have no equity yeah so those are the homes that I specifically go after because I know that if they were to sell that house on the market traditionally today mm-hmm. they might break they will they might break even or lose money mm. so what so this so this is what I say is uh, hey hey. Uh, I saw that your your house was uh, was house your house on one two three Main Street is up, is on the market. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, you, and I will call. I my my approach is very straight up because what I what I look at is uh, what what is the house listed for, mm-hmm. and how much does the homeowner owe on the mortgage? Mm-hmm. Like the mortgage balance is a public record. Mm-hmm. So when you when you see a house that's listed for three eighty and they owe three sixty on the house, mm-hmm. that's a that's they're gonna break even on that house. Yeah. So what what I'll tell them is, hey, you know, I see I see your house on 123 Main Street. I know you got you have it you guys have it listed for 360 uh 380, but you guys have a mortgage balance of 360. Mm. Um you got, and you know, it looks like you guys are you guys are about you guys are on in best case scenario break even on the house. Is it okay if I instead of you maybe cashing out a check to sell this house, 
I'll give you, you know, five to ten thousand dollars in your pocket and take over your existing mortgage that's already on there. That's it. That's all you say. That's literally my. That, yeah, <laughs> I ha I have a I have a I have like seven cold calling you uh, YouTube videos on my YouTube channel, mm. and every single every single time it's the same exact line. Say hey, I know your I know your home I know your house is tied on equity. Instead of you ca instead of you cutting a check to sell your house potentially, mm -hmm. can I guarantee you you know at almost five to ten thousand dollars in your pocket and yeah. take over your existing mortgage payment? Got it. Okay, and that's it. That's literally it. How many? Okay, so. Have you, do you know your KPIs as far as like how many sellers it takes to get a contract and all that stuff? Yeah. What well, are they? It's 34 homeowners. Uh huh. And you, you get one contract. What? Yeah. But, but you got, but this, but mind you, this is, this is a very specific type of owner, homeowner, right? Like if you, if I, if I have a house that's on the market and I owe 360, 380 on the house, uh -huh. my, no, I'm trying to sell for 380, but I owe 360, I know for a fact I have to cut a check. So it's just, it, so if, unless I get a full, full on cash offer, Mm -hmm. at 380 yeah uh or cut a check there, there's no way homeowner's not going to go anywhere yeah that's a very small niche it's a very small niche so are you calling are you calling listed properties yeah you said, you're calling properties that are listed yeah. are you calling the realtor or you're calling the seller i'm calling the realtor first <laughs> <laughs> believe you. i don't believe it no <laughs> No, literally, you can go on my YouTube channel, and this okay. is exactly my, my 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 line is the same every single time. <laughs> oh, okay. So you call the, the 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 realtor first, tell them that line. What if they're like, you know, Kevin, go pound sand? Yeah. Th then then I would wait a little bit, and then I'll call the realtor back. Oh, okay. So you I, won't call the seller. I mean, if it goes expired or the agent, if the agent doesn't pick up ever pick up my phone call, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go directly directly to the seller. Mm. But these are the homeowners. I have no other choice. Yeah. Like they can't take a low cash offer. Yeah. So the only offer that the only offer that they have is get hopefully they get a full price offer. Yeah. They let it go to foreclosure or short sale or mm -hmm. sub two. Yeah. There's there's literally no other option. So a lot of like you'd be you'd be surprised. Like I'll say twenty to twenty five percent of the deals that I do, the homeowner actually doesn't want to do sub two. But they know that's the only option for them to get out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I believe it. Cause yeah. I've dude, I've been flipping houses for five years yeah. um i've done hundreds of real estate transactions myself yeah um and i've had properties where i fucking <laughs> we gotta bleep that out. <laughs> we gotta bleep that out but where i'm gonna lose money and i know what it is to be like dude i'm at my break even price right now if i go <laughs> below this it's gonna you know what i'm saying you're just like yeah. damn it <laughs> So I could see where some people like they don't have the money to just be like, all right, I'm gonna take a 20k loss right now oh, yeah. because they know their house should be listed, you know, 25k less plus the realtor fees. Right. They're not gonna make any money. Right, right. But they're gonna lose money. Yeah. So yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. And, but um, go ahead. Yeah, and, and what I do, it, this is so funny because, you know, like, I, the moment that they're in my CRM and they in and they're and they're no equity. I could, I don't, it's like, I, I'm not in any rush. Like you're the, you're the homeowners, homeowners, the one that's making the mortgage payment. Yeah. And most of, most often than not, the homeowner already has moved out or they already have a rental that they're paying mortgage yeah. rentals on and another mortgage if they bought a house. So now if the homeowner is making two different mortgage payments, I know. it's just a waiting game. You wait yeah. two, three months and like yeah. they come back to you. It's funny too, because not to go back to that NOD thing, but that's why I used to love working with NODs because it's like, you know what it is, right? Like you're gonna, you haven't paid. Mm -hmm. The bank's gonna foreclose on you, right? Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Instead yeah. of like a homeowner that's kind of like, oh, well, my house is free and clear, so I don't have to sell. Yeah. There's like, oh, okay, like they, even if they blow me off right now, I'm like, okay, well, you blow me off, but I know you're gonna sell. Right. Right. I know you are. Like, yeah. I, I could see your cards. Yeah. It's all public record. Right. And I could like obviously service them and make sure that I could do whatever I can with like relocation funds or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. for NODs. But that's why I used to go after it because it's like high, high distress. Yeah. High, high distress. Yeah. yeah. And, so. and, and, the, and these homes are beautiful. They like, are. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, they're they're They might be financially distressed, right. In terms of, you know, like they don't have the money to pay the mm -hmm. pay, pay, you know, come out of pocket to sell the house. But all the, like, if you look at all this, all the deals, like every single one of them, like beautiful, like a lot of new construction homes and just a lot of like, they're listed on the market for sale. Yeah. So they, they're staged most, most often than that. Most, some, <laughs> some of them are furnished. Like I bought my house furnished. That's so random. Yeah. Have you, ha have you found any really nice houses in Vegas? I'll freaking move in there. Oh, actually, I actually have a deal uh, that, that I'm working on right now. It's, it's in all the way. It's right by, 
Air Force Base. Now let's Air oh, Force Base. Shit, no, that's ghetto. No, no it's, it's, it's really ghetto. <laughs> but then that deal. Uh, homeowner... I don't want to live by the Air Force Base. <laughs> it's super loud. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, well, that deal, the homeowner bought the house. They're, so they're a veteran, right? So they bought the house okay. using the VA loan. And they, that makes sense. And they're getting, re- they're getting stationed somewhere else. So, yeah. they, so they own the house for just about two years. They're trying to sell it. They know they have no equity. And, and they, came out, they actually came back to, we actually put in, off, put in the offer four months ago. Mm. And they actually came back to us today. Got it. Okay. Well, they're, like, they're like, we can't. How keep- big is it? Four three. Twenty two hundred square feet. Okay. I need yeah. a bigger house. But if you get anything with a pool that's like three thousand square feet, let me know. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, in I, Vegas. I'll I, I do I do I do quite a few deals here. Okay. So yeah. okay, so this is your strategy. How do you get this list? Is it just MLS listings that are <laughs> no sitting there? No, no, no. So what the way I pull these lists is mm-hmm. I go on prop stream. Okay. And I, I and on props you can put in the filters and the filters that I put is on market for sale, MLS, and they own the house for less than, you know, twenty four months. Mm-hmm. And they uh, and they and then when they bought the house they used VA loan or FHA loan. Oh because okay. you know VA loan, no money down, yeah. FHA loan three, three and a half percent. Yeah. yeah. So most likely if they're if they bought the house with a VA loan, no money down and within two two years they're selling the house, yeah, you can kinda you can kinda tell like this house has no equity. Mm. Yeah. And you're saying every 36 you're getting one contract. Yeah. So why don't you just like freaking blow up the whole list? Like I feel like Oh yeah. I I I, I blow it up. And yeah. it, but it's a very small it's a very small list. Oh. So here here in Clark County, there's like 400 of them. But then that means there's like 10 deals in there. Well, there's 10 deals that happen like every one every 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 month or so. Mm. But then like within that if I were to put it, put in the statistics from other whole, other people in this market, I'll say if there's 400, 400 people list address, I, I I can confidently say there's at least forty to fifty deals in there. What? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, be, because so why don't you do that many deals? Well, it's I can't take on. I I'm in like multiple markets. I'm in Arizona, Vegas, Texas, and Florida, and all the all these places. But it, you you got to understand like this homeowner, like the one that I just talked about near the Air Force Base, like they they've been on that li- they've been on my no equity list for the last four months, and now they mm. just came back. So. It's like it just when it's just matter of when the egg starts hatching. You know, they they the egg might the egg might be there, you know, day one. And some of them hatch right away. Some of them hatch, you know, 30 days after. You know, but mm. some some homeowners come back to you four months later, like this homeowner. That's the only thing you do, or you have other strategies? That's literally the only thing I do. <laughs> My business is very simple. <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, most great businesses are. Like I said, when I used to do the freaking NODs, yeah. I'd call the new NODs. Yeah. And then I would call the NOSs, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, there was no like it wasn't sophisticated at all, and it was the same pitch. Yeah. It's like, hey, um, Kevin, it looks like your property is <laughs> about to foreclose. Are you interested in doing a loan modification or selling? Oh, I want to do a loan modification. Okay, uh, do you mind if I ask you some questions about that? Do you have a job? No. <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's out the door. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you know, I'd, I'd, have you filed bankruptcy? Yeah, whatever. Okay, well, it looks like you have a foreclosure day coming up, December fifteenth. What are you gonna do? Mm. Well, I'm gonna. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I can connect you with a, le- a hard money lender. Do you have equity? Okay. Like you know, what I'm saying you just kind of problem solve, yeah. and then let them to come to the conclusion of like, okay, you have two options, and it's not legal advice. You could potentially file bankruptcy because that's the only thing that stops a foreclosure right um or sell yeah or keep trying to do a a loan modification yeah or catch up yeah or catch up yeah but borrow money from family yeah but then usually it's like okay sometimes they did qualify yeah and that's great yeah but most of the time if there's equity the lenders are not going to do a loan modification yeah yeah yeah, and and how many how many when you were calling the NODs mm-hmm. and NOSs, how many were there on the list? Not a lot, not a lot, not a lot. But I would call the new ones. Yeah. I would call the brand new NODs, and then I would call like that month all the properties that were going to foreclose that month, yeah. and then next month I would call that, and that would that was enough. Yeah, it, yeah. that kept me busy enough. I didn't like have to do more than that. Right, right. And then I started doing social media, yeah. so that <clears throat> also too when I started. I felt like I was a little ahead because mm-hmm. people were like, oh, like, you're making videos. Like, okay. And yeah. like, I didn't, honestly, even now that I think about it, in SoCal, I don't know a lot of other 
investors or wholesalers or flippers that do videos. Do you know anyone? No. In SoCal? No. Yeah. So where I was it, at it, in, in the IE in San Bernardino County. Yeah. I was like the only one. I was like the most successful investor that was under 30. Yeah. Everyone else that I knew, they were like huge. I knew huge investors in SoCal. I don't know if you know like Ricardo Acevedo or like big, big, like monster investors, but they were old. Yeah. So they weren't on social media. Yeah. They just like been in the game for 50 years. Yeah. So go, speaking of social media, one thing that really helped my amplify my business, almost literally 10x my business this year was social media because I started getting these deals. Like, no, this is no joke. My very first list that I pulled in uh, Mesa, Arizona. Mesa is like probably half a million po population. Mm. There was house, there was a list of 53 homes. The second house, uh, so this is after my Yuma house. So this, so after I found this home, after I did the house in Yuma, I'm like, I need to find more, and I need to find more John and Mary, right? Like mm -hmm. these these homeowners that just bought the house. Pulled the list on, uh, in uh, from PropStream in Mesa. 52 addresses on there. Second house that I call, I call the listing agent. I ended up getting another deal, and then the, and then I go through 52 houses, and then I get I get three more deals out of it with just with 52 houses. What the hell? I I, I literally it's crazy. I go through 52 houses list once, and I get four sub two deals out of it. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, "What's happening? Like how 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 are, Kevin? How are you getting all these deals?" Yeah. And then I st and I give this give the secret away. Messed up again. <laughs> Stop again. <laughs> totally, uh, you're messing up right now. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I I give out the secret away mm -hmm. and then uh and then everybody started like you know, everybody started getting deals deals, but then like they they're like and but these these people are like not so great at sub creative finance because everybody's you know, everybody's you know still newer to the game. So what ended up happening is I'd me teaching other people how to you know call these no equity lists, I call them. Mm -hmm. They they will call them and they wouldn't know what to do with it or they don't know how to negotiate it. So they'll bring the deals up to me. Mm. So now I have these little minions of people going out and you know calling these homeowners mm -hmm. or calling these agents. And now I I I am basically the closer. Like all the mm. deals funnel up to me. Mm. Right. It's like you have other wholesalers that sell you yeah, deals. Sell me deals. Yeah. Yeah. And social media was really a big play a big part in that. Got it. So what about so how many total deals you done this year? 73? 72. 72. Yeah. And we are in November right now. So yeah. that's like, what, seven a month, eight a month? Yeah. How much money have you made? Uh, Just in assignments, probably 350. Okay. Yeah, straight yeah. up assignments. And these are smaller, smaller size deals. Smaller size deals. But I mean, if you were to like straight wholesale in like the Midwest, yeah. you're going to get these type of like 5k deals yeah and that's with spending marketing and all that other crap that goes into like like normal wholesaling right yeah right and now but, but then the but, but then the best part about it is like you know when i have when i give out give out the free list like i'm not spending any money on vas or nothing like that so all i would do is just wait for the people to text me and say hey i'll hop on the phone call with your seller or the agent and like my overhead was literally like there was, there was nothing that i was paying for mm. so like you know it is, you know, yeah, I made 300. I, di I didn't make a lot of money per deal because I also had splits with the wholesaler that brought me the deal. Mm -hmm. But my overhead was virtually none and I didn't really spend time cold calling it a mm. year in, in the last, like, you know, six months. Got it. Okay, so what's next? Like, what, like are you going to ride this wave? Are you looking at doing something else? Like, what do you what do you see your business looking like in 2024? In 2024, uh, I, I, see that I, I see myself doing the exact same thing mm -hmm. uh, because it's working. Yeah, you know, I, I, we got it. We got it. Bed stops working. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. But yeah, but I okay. What I don't understand is you're in Arizona, right? Yeah, and um, you know, you're in the sub two community. There's freaking ten thousand people in that community, and I'm pretty sure they all know about what you're doing. Yeah, why wouldn't it get saturated if you're saying there's only like fifty six listings that you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's definitely it's way saturated than ever than it has ever been. Oh. But but what happens is like oh. I said like they don't they don't know what to do with them. Like they do, like most people most of these people they, most of these people that are actually cold calling they don't have the money to cold they don't have, they don't, they actually don't have the money to take them down. Mm. You know if they had the money then you know they would just wait for all the deals to come to them and they'll buy it. Mm. Right? But the reason why they're hustling on the phone is because they don't have that money. So God. what happens is, you know, they end up, you know, using me as like a Keegley, right? So they, yeah, dispo it. Yeah. So yeah. they come to me and say, hey, I have this homeowner that's that's, a, that's under contract for sub two. Can you help me find a buyer for this deal? God. So it. like for literally like cherry, all the deals funnel st still to this, still to this day, these mm. deals funnel up to me.
Got it. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and then you think in 2024, you're just going to do the same thing. There's nothing else you want to try, nothing else you've been looking at. I'm keeping my eyes on it very carefully right now mm -hmm. because, you know, the rates are so high. So even if the homeowner bought the house a year and a half ago, the yeah. rates are 6%, 7%. Or higher, yeah. Yeah, but then if I go back three or four years, a lot of homes have equity. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm at a such, I'm, I'm at a very uh, weird spot like where like, do I, how, how sustainable is this business model? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, as we speak, November 2023, you know, mm -hmm. we, we have eight deals in escrow right now. Okay. So oh, everything's up too. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. So let's just talk about the market, right? So right now rates went above 8%. They went yeah. back down. They're at like seven and a half. I think it's very possible that they're going to raise rates and rates are going to go high in January, March of 2024. Okay. High to like eight. Yeah. Um, And I think what's going to happen is when election gets close, Uncle Joe yeah. is going to be like, lower these yeah, rates. Lower and them. I know this is not how it works. So people are going to talk all this crap, but the back end this is how I think it works. Uncle Joe is going to say, all right, we beat inflation, guys. We beat it. We can lower rates now. And then they're going to try to taper rates down. Yeah. And then we might see real estate pick back up. That's what I think is going to happen. Yeah. Because if he goes into the next election with rates being high, you know, a possible recession, he's not going to win. Yeah. So they're going to do whatever they need to do to win. That's right. what I think is going to happen. Yeah. I see. I see that coming. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. And, but so I think, I think what I need to start working on is, you know, in the, Kind of this is this is something that came up on my mind this as this week is I might start working start working on foreclosures again because yeah, foreclosures you know they, they could be they could be homes that was for, that was that's going into foreclosure but they bought it five six years ago when the mm -hmm. rates are still three percent mm -hmm. and you know so and they are and they're still in the timeline yeah so if the no equity list stops working then I might start then I might go back to working foreclosure deals because they have good equity you know yeah you go into a deal right into equity right away yeah what about okay let's Let's talk really quickly about midterm rentals. So yeah. you have how many midterm rentals? I have 10 midterm rentals. Okay, you have 10 midterm rentals yeah. and you say <laughs> they average about 1800 a month. Yeah. How much does it cost to start a midterm rental? Uh so it, it usually like from buying the house usually it's cuz I I I I cherry pick the best ones. Mm -hmm. Right? So usually for me to go buy a house up to Twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars down, mm -hmm. closing costs. So if I'm, let's just say I'm all in for to buy, just to buy the house, twenty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And but this is me, could be, and I have a lot of deal flow, so I get to cherry pick the best ones. So twenty-five grand just to buy the house, and then our our average three bedroom, two bath, uh, furnishing is around, I'll say twelve thousand dollars because my partner actually goes and furnishes it by herself. Mm -hmm. So if just if just on the furnishing, twelve thousand dollars. And then sometimes we do like a very minor renovation. Like we put up a wall. Mm -hmm. So like one house we have, it's a three bedroom, two bath. We'll split it one, one and a two, one. So we have mm. two different units. Mm. So, and, but for a midterm. Yeah. Mm. So we have, so we have separate entrances and separate, you know, kitchens and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and we, and we will build out a very, very small kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, and the, and the renovation probably like six to $7,000. Mm. So all into deal, we're probably in $45,000. Got yeah. it. And then you know we cash flow net <clears throat> because we have two different units in this, in this house mm -hmm. uh, around eighteen hundred dollars. Eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah. So you try to do that with all of them. Try to split them. Yeah, we try to split as many houses as as much as we can. And where do you? How many did you say you own? Ten. And where are they at? We I have uh, five in Phoenix. Okay. Including my house, and then I have four, uh, and then I have another, another five in Tampa. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And then are you open to doing other markets or like why did you pick those two markets? Uh, well, I was, I, my partner lives in Tampa. So she was already okay. doing midterm rentals there. And then mm. I was, I was living in Phoenix mm. and then I had deal flow in Phoenix. So she's like, let's start midterm rental in Phoenix. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I think if, if I were to open up a next market, next market, it would be Vegas. Because mm. okay. I, I have a house up in Centennial I bought. Two point seven, nice? yeah, it's 2.7% interest rate. Mm -hmm. My payment on it is like seven, uh, sixteen hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and I, I'm I plan on doing a, a midterm rental on that house with, and hopefully we'll you know bring in like four thousand dollars a month. Where do you list them to rent them? So, uh, we have right now we have we list them on Airbnb. Mm -hmm. We also list them on Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. We list them on ALE Solutions. 
Okay, I've never heard of that. Oh, you never heard of it? It's it's based. I don't have any midterms. Oh. I have Airbnbs and long term. Yeah, yeah. A- ALE Solutions. It's basically a third party company. So let's just say your house floods. Um, your 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 insurance company will call ALE Solutions and mm. they will match you with the with the house. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So and 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 the typical bookings we get is you know three to six months and they mm. pay a really good amount. Like usually like. Here in Vegas, we have my, my parents' house is actually on air. A, we actually got it rented as a midterm rental mm-hmm. on ALE Solutions, and they're paying forty five hundred dollars a month for three mm. two, mm. two uh, two thousand square feet, and they usually pay like double the market rent. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's where you you list them all. Yeah. Got it. <clears throat> okay, and then what about like what's the drawbacks of creative finance? Because everyone always talks about like how great it is, but like what what are some of the things you got to like watch out for, or things that people don't know? Uh, so th- I mean, this is what you you have to reach uh, uh, watch out for is is you when you're buying some when you're buying a house sub two meaning you take over someone's mortgage payment, you have to make sure you have money to pay the mortgage payment because a lot of people they get too excited and this, and they say oh I can go buy a house with without any of my own cash no credit no credentials yeah you can do that you can raise the you can you know raise the you know thirty thousand forty thousand dollars to get into the deal and you end up finding out the ca- house doesn't cash flow. Mm. And something breaks, you know, you have a minor repairs in the house where you can't even repair it. Mm-hmm. Like you have to have money to get into it. So I think a lot of people get too excited, if anything, that they can go buy a house right away, but and they don't they don't think about the homeowner's mortgage that's on the line. Oh, yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, yeah, so, I can see that because I feel like everyone, like you said, they get so excited, like, oh, I'm gonna buy a house. Yeah, and then they don't realize like owning real estate costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money, right? <laughs> <laughs> My wife. My wife gets mad because sometimes, like, as an in, as an investor, you could go from having a ton of money yeah. to having literally nothing. Right. And there's times where I'm invested. Yeah. I'm a true investor. I invest money. I buy houses. I renovate. I do all this crap. And I'll tell her, I'm like, oh, well, geez, I, I'll be complaining. Like, dude, I'm freaking no blowing cash. a bunch of money. Yeah. I'm low on cash. And she's like, oh, but I thought you did this and that. And I'm like... Yeah, but like I, I had a freaking pool pump stolen like three days ago. That was thirty five hundred, <laughs> and then I had a fr- I had to put a door on a flip, and then I I literally had a, a rental unit flood in Desert Hot Springs. So it's just like constant like money. Yeah, it's like you ha- you have to be good at deals, so you have to be good at sales. You have to be good at marketing, and then you also have to be good at finance. Right, because if you don't like save enough and yeah. you invest too much, you could be in big trouble. Yeah, and I think it's it's so important that like as you like you flip and you hold houses, so you still have active income coming in. But if mm-hmm. you're so if you're if you're buying your first house and you don't even have any active income coming exactly. in, exactly, you're like in a big trouble. Yeah, you're in a huge <laughs> pickle. So yeah, all right, great podcast. If people want to find you, where do they go? Uh, best way to find me is on my Instagram at Kevin Cho twelve Kevin Cho one two, and then also I, if you want to see some of my cold calling videos, I also have them on my, on my YouTube channel. And my YouTube channel is also Kevin Show 12. Beautiful. All right, guys. This was the Wealthy Investor Podcast. We are out. Peace.